we're live. Hello. This is Tanil, your cloth nappy doctor. And it is September's Ask Me Anything. And it's really awesome. Some people have asked me stuff. Yes. I love it. Um, I had to come in a little bit earlier tonight uh, just because my girl needs me tonight. I know it's going to be a very long night for her. And I didn't want to miss out on doing this for you. So I've had to negotiate and um, with myself. Um, so I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So I'm not doing it at seven. So it's all wrong. And it's all, so. so I come in a bit earlier. But this is always evergreen. It's always in there. You can go back and forth and watch me ramble on about this stuff. But yeah. So tonight we are going to chat about newborn cloth nappies because it's September and September is one of the big big months of um, people having babies can you guess why because it is nine months after New Year's Eve and Christmas um, so yeah so this is when we sell usually when we sell the most newborn nappies and when parents really start really thinking about it. So we're going to go through all the different types of newborn nappies you can use from day one. Do you have to spend $26 on a newborn nappy? Do you have to spend $2 on a pre-fold? What should you use? So we're going to have a chat about that. Um, we're going to ask some questions about washing cloth nappies. We're going to chat about, um, what else have we done? Um, breastfeeding and bottle feeding, storing cloth nappies. So it's really cool to ask the questions, you know. If you got any, if you got any through the um, ask me anything, pop them up. They they come up. I, I bought a really fangangle video thing. Look at me being techno um, to answer your questions, so I can see them without being weird. Now, oh, I want uh, There you go. Okay, so a little bit of housekeeping first. Now, I know I haven't drawn the winner of the USA trip tagline. I can't choose. And I've been out all day for doctors. So, and I haven't had a chance to chat to Lee Ann from Baby B Hines. So, her and I are going to choose the winner tomorrow. So, if you still want to enter, you may um, put up a tagline. So, the tagline has to be. Uh, Something to do with a B, B E E, so behaving. Um, there's a few good ones there. They're really cool. Uh, yeah. Oh, and something arrived in the mail this week. And what's quite funny is um, my little mascot that I'm going to take with me to the US was has been handmade in the US. <laughs> so he has travelled from the US to Australia to travel back again. So I'm going to reveal him next week and you guys are going to help me name him and Leanne, Leanne and I are going to choose the name for the mascot. So he arrived, he's wrapped in tissue paper so I'm sorry for the um, microphone but I'm not showing you yet, I'll show you a little bit. But he's a perfect size to travel with me on the plane. And I might show you just a, a little bit of his, his foot. That's his foot. Alrighty. Bet you can't guess what it is. So, I'll reveal him next week in the group, because all this US stuff that I'm doing, and there's lots happening. It's really exciting. Getting a little nervous, but I'm really excited. Um, I'll reveal him next week, and you guys going to help me name him because he's going to be my centerpiece and he's going to follow me everywhere. I'm going to be that mad Aussie woman with this little mascot on my shoulder as I walk around Vegas. All right. Now, shall we get, jump to it? I think we'll jump to it. Now, um, newborn cloth nappies. Right. Should you use uh, disposable or cloth nappies from newborn? That is one of the most popular questions we get. Uh, our response, um, Trudy and I, we're very practical. Do what works for you. So if you want to do new, 
newborn at home, you know, get used to these little gorgeous little things. Because newborn nappies are different to your one size nappies. Okay? They, they're just a size nappy. Your one size nappies have got all that changing and sizing and there's a bit more oh, faint dangle stuff you got to do to it. Newborn nappies go on and come off generally. So you need to decide, well, I might do just cloth nappies during the day. I might do disposables at night when I go out or I really love them. I'll do them all the time or yeah, not quite for me. But if you use just one nappy, just one, because you're going to be changing 12 times a day on average. That's disposable or cloth nappies. It didn't matter. It didn't, my four, it didn't matter what they were in. We change them. You've got to change them every two to four hours. Sometimes it can be every 40 minutes. That's okay. That's all right. So even if you just use one nappy, just one in those first six weeks, one a day, six times seven is 42. 42 nappies not gone to landfill. And if a hundred people did it, there's 420 nappies not gone to landfill. So one little nappy isn't going to landfill. And you've done something for the environment. You've saved a bit of cash. I just like that. Okay. So you need to just do one and just give it a go. So we'll start with, oh, so this is the nappy you can win with an um, B tagline competition we're running. It's, it's in the feed, in the Cloth Nappy Dr. Chats feed. All right, it's there, it's competition. This is the nappy you can win, the paw print, new baby behinds newborn nappy. And I'll show you this one a bit later. All right, newborn cloth nappies. Right, the trick to new, what you need to know, you need lots of them. Okay, so you need, oh, you're changing 12 a day. So you need 12 on average. So that means you need 24 if you're going to wash every day. If you're going to wash every second day, you need 36. Now, it does not mean you need 24 to 36 of these nappies. It means you need 24 to 36 changes. So it could mean six to eight covers and 24 flannel washes. That's it. You, this, you need your absorbency. And because little newborns have little, little bladders, they can't hold a lot, they wee a lot. They wee often because they can't hold it. So that's why you change so often. When it comes to the number twos, every kid is different. Every kid is different. You cannot predict what your darling is going to do until they're here. So from my four kids... I had one who would do a poo every seven days, so we would wait, and then we saw it coming, and it went everywhere. It went everywhere. It was just horrid. You just picked everything up and changed him. Um, and then we had uh, one of them would poo three times a day. Uh, one would poo once a day. That was pretty cool. Um, and another would poo every time we did a feed. Whether it's just a splat or a um, full-on poop. Yeah. And it wasn't anything I was eating. I'd keep trying to, well, maybe I should change what I'm eating. Um, no, they just pooped. So every kid's different. So the idea, and some of them wee more and wee less, they're all different. So you need to get to know your kid. You need to understand how they wee and poo. And just go with the flow. It's You can be relaxed if you've got lots of options to change a nappy. All right, so let's go through what options there are for newborns, okay? So I'm not going to go into older kids. Um, I think my next AMA will be for older kids. Um, we will do newborns tonight, and I think next month we'll do older children because we're starting to get lots and lots of queries. Now, I had a really great idea of bringing in a little table so I could show you up here instead of doing underneath. I couldn't find anything, so I've improvised with a box. How's that for reusing? Didn't buy anything, it's not plastic. How cool is that? Alrighty. Your first option for a newborn is a good old flat. 
okay? And then you can fold it up, and I do it on this small surface. That is the question. Okay, you can fold it however you want to fold it. Lots of different ways for boys and girls. This is one of the Simply Cloth Flats that we sell. It's a bamboo 450 GSM bamboo. Hello, Zoe. Hello, Sue. Thank you for joining us. What are you doing right now? I'm wondering how many people are bathing kids. Okay, so I've just folded that into a triangle. Okay, and then you can snappy these up however you wish. So there's your newborn. Then you need a cover to go over these. And in a newborn cover, what you are looking for if you're using flats or pre-folds is a wide enough groin through here. So even if it's a one size cover you decide to use, make sure the groin is wide enough. Putting dinner on high. <laughs> Thanks, Sue. I love that. But this is evergreen, so if you need to get to it because kids are yelling at you, get going, okay? This will be here forever. Yay! <laughs> all right. Make sure you've got a wide enough groin. So there's a few... I've got all my stuff over here. So you've got a few different options, all right? You've got to make sure that groin will take this insert, all right? Uh... So there you go, there's your flat, you know how to fold them. Uh, we did an AMA oh, about six months, three to six months ago on folds. It's up on YouTube um, and it's in the group as well. So I've done all the folds for a flat. So you'll be able to go back and look at that. Uh, next one is your pre-folds. I love these because it's less work than these. And Pre-folds can be used as um, boosters later on. So newborn pre-folds are usually um, smaller and less absorbency than your uh, baby or infant size. Okay, so the Grow Vi ones, so these will be size one. Um, bubble bubs, so the size one. So the very first size. Usually smaller. All right, so these are organic cotton. And a pre-fold has the absorbency down the middle. There's an extra, it says four layers and two on either side. How to use them, because this is all it is, you can do it with a snappy. Uh, Trudy loves using them with a snappy. I like laying them in the cover, so you can do as you wish. Now, when they are washed, they become all waffled. Now, I, um, about a month ago, decided I might try and dye some um, pre-folds by natural means. So I took some berries and I boiled them and I did all these really cool things and I dyed them and I actually made them red and then I washed them and it all ran out. So everything else ended up red. So anyway, so this is why this one looks a bit pinkish, I think. Anyway, so when they get washed... Most organic cotton or bamboo cotton, they will shrink. That's normal. That is fine. It's usually at 15 to 20%. All right. That's because they become waffly and they become really, really soft. And they become an appropriate size to pop in your cover. Now, you can fold them in three and pop them in your cover. Where is she? Here's my cover. All right. Now, some covers might have a flap at the front, all right? So bummies have a flap at the front, and where is it? Baby behinds do not. Does it matter? Not really. Um, a flap at the front can help keep it in place. That's about it, really, and help with a bit of leakage protection. So you pop it in. There you go. Now, you can fold it either long ways or in three lengthways and pop it in all right now when we come to that's your pre-fold oh my boxes all fell over now when it comes to your pre-fold you can use a snappy and it's called an angel fold more boxes fell over there's no one here all right and what you do is you fan out the top 
Again, a video uh, a couple of months ago has all the folds for pre-folds. It's an AMA, so just have a look back in the videos and I'll tag it on this one when I finish, okay? And then that goes up, so I can show you that. All right, now your covers, and you'll see this on some of the nappies as we progress up. Some, they can be um, snap closing or Velcro. A lot of people like Velcro for newborns because it's softer and they, they're just so little. And you can usually, if they cross over, you can get a nice um, fit around the waist. Now, some covers have a dip at the front to allow for the umbilical port. So you can see baby B kinds do not. They're straight across. Bummies do. There's a dip there to allow for the umbilical cord. Okay. Um, you can decide. Just make sure it's below the umbilical cord. What else do I want to tell you? Most of, yes, most of Velcro. You can get snap. Uh, Rumpa Roos does a snap. Rumpa Roos do a snap one. Someone else does a snap one. Oh, there's, there's all sorts out there. Okay, you've seen them. You've done the Google search. You've got oh, already. Now, so that's pre-flats, pre-folds. Your next step up. Still requiring a cover are fitteds. And again, there's two types of fitteds. I'm trying to make that my. Now, these are Imagine, these are a bamboo. I like these because you don't have to use a snappy or anything. Okay, so there you go. You need a cover for these. So a fitted is. Um, Great for newborns, especially if you think you're gonna if you've got a bit of a heavy wetter, is because the whole nappy is absorbent. The whole thing. So it's not just down that middle with your pre-fold, where you've just folded in three. It's not just that, it's the whole thing. So it's really good. Okay. Um that's what's great about so that's got layers of bamboo in it. They're really great. So when you as I'm nattering away. What I want you to think about is how much do you want to spend? Um, it's not your first question, it's usually your last question, believe it or not. You're thinking about the style of newborn nappy that you want to have or a combination of styles because you can get a budget version, you can get an expensive version, you can get one made in Canada, you can get one made in China, you can get one, you know, there is such a plethora of options, you're going to get it. Um, pretty much or really close to what you want. So think about what style you like. If you like the thought of pre-folds, go with it. If you like the thought of flats, go with that. These are generally more versatile because you can use them as boosters. These are a one size, so you can use these to boost in these later. These are more versatile and um, a better bag for your buck, okay, because you can use them later on. And when kids are finished, you can use them as rags, okay, for cleaning or tea towels or whatever you want really so but if you want the ease of no folding and snappies this is this is the section we're into next so these are sometimes good for night time when I mean, you're up at night and you're oh, God, I'm bothered. above you know feeding every hour between freaking 10 and 2 oh, my Daniel. okay so these are fitted you need a cover Okay, any cover, again, with a wider groin in them, okay? You're not looking for those really trim, trim, trim ones through here. You need something that can take the bulk in the middle. So these will generally hold more than your pre-folds. So if you've got night time or a bit of a longer car trip, you can use these. Now, the Velcro fitteds usually don't have a snap down for the umbilical cord. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean. So this is your same nappy, but it's got snaps. And you can see here, you just snap down for the umbilical. And you've got two sizings on this one as well. So it's a bit like your little joeys. <gasps> I didn't grab that one. Oh, I to get the little joey. Okay, it's like your little joeys by Rum Peru's. You can size it through this row of snaps or through this row of snaps. All right, so I'll put it on the smaller setting and you can see it with the um, umbilical cord down. Oh, new snaps, new snaps. 
already. Okay, so there's the umbilical cord snapped down and it gets a little bit smaller, so that little leg hole, you want that nice firm fit. All right, if you've got any questions, guys, pop them up as I natter away, all right? I'm guided by you. These are the most common questions we get and that's what I'm basing it on. All right, okay, so there are your fitters. Now, up from there is more convenience because that's what you're going to pay for as you go along is a bit more convenience. There's less steps involved. So instead of a two-part system, which is your cover and your... Uh, pre-fold or flat and fitted. You're now, now coming into your pocket, all in ones and all in twos. So, where is she? Let's do pocket slash all in one. There's not many pocket newborn nappies. Sweet Pea used to do one, and I think they still do, and that used to come with one microfiber insert. You need more than that. Um, you need, you want some absorbency in them, because, um, if you want it to go for four hours, you need some absorbency. If you're happy to just have one little microfiber insert, you're going to change more often. Um, yeah. So as you get up into these ones, so this is the Baby D Heinz newborn. Okay. My, my um, hormones start to go off now because they get extra super cute. <laughs> okay. It's got really nice wide Velcro at the front. Okay, so that makes it quicker and easier when you're changing. Instead of having little tabs, you can just have and done. Now, the baby behinds, it has a pocket, all right? That means you have your stay dry layer on here. So these other options, the pre-fold and the bamboo flat, they don't have to stay dry. You have to add that in, all right? So if you want that stay dry, um, so you've got your suede cloth or micro fleece, you don't have to add that yourself. All right. Now, Baby B Hines comes with your six layers of bamboo, quick and easy. So as you come into this, you've got the convenience of you whack it on and take it off like a disposable. Okay, it goes straight on. You don't have to do anything to prepare like these ones. You just put it straight on. Bum. Oh, I wonder if I grab my dolls. All right. You just whack it on and off you go. And there's some lovely pictures on baby behind at the moment of the babies in them. Now, when you wash these, oh, thanks, Kerry, you're using it so far. And it's all going, yeah, it's a really, look, it is a really good nappy. They've designed it really well. you got to pull it out of the pocket to wash it. All right, don't leave it in there because the water can't get in the pocket. All right, so you got to pull this out. They also come in with another booster. This doesn't have to go in the pocket. So if you've got a little one who doesn't like um, synthetic, see the pocket's big enough to get your hand in as well. Some little newborn nappy, you've got to do this whole thread this through and then pull this bit through and then try and make it flat. I'm not for that. All right, anyway, they come with an extra uh, bamboo insert. Okay, so you can put that in the pocket, or if you want a bub who is a bit sensitive to uh, man-made materials, so the polyesters, suede cloth, micro fleece, you got your bamboo. You can put that against their skin instead. Okay, so it's not a stay dry layer, it's a natural layer. Which is better? You're not going to know until you have bub. Okay, and bub is going to change as they grow older. And every kid is different. I know you don't want to hear that. And if there was one solution that fitted everybody, we wouldn't have the range of nappies that we have. All right. So it's about seeing. So if, you, if, if you've got a boy and it, their willy's getting a little bit red, you know, and you think, oh, that's not due to wee, and it's not because of the poo because I'm changing, you could say it could be due to a sway cloth. So I had two boys who did that. And as they got a bit older, and um, one had acidic wheeze, they'd get a few little blisters on their little wiggies, and it hurt. Um, Abigail, um, she doesn't like um, uh, sway cloth against her. Um, she gets a bit red. So we try and put a natural layer um, or um, a disposable liner if we use those as well. All right, so, so just, just look at their little nether regions and just say, oh, okay, because you're changing all the time. You're staring at their, that little bum hole a lot. You get to know your child really well. All right, so this is an all-in-one baby behinds. Quick and easy to put on. Kerry loves them going well. They'll last two to four hours depending on your child. 
Alrighty. Uh, I should say, uh, newborn nappies will usually last first six weeks, maybe eight weeks. You may get to 12 weeks. Size, up to five to six kilos. Um, depends on the size and shape of your baby. It's like the one size nappy. Some might say they go to 18 kilos, but your child outgrows it at 12 kilos because they're a chubba bubba, like my Nathan, who outgrew them at uh, 18 months. Okay, all right, so that's your all-in-one. Your next one is your all-in-two. Now, some newborn nappies, this one's a funky fluff, will have sizing at the front. So if you're, you think you're going to have a little baby, these ones are great. These ones also tend to last a little bit longer. So I'll show you. There's a little bit of a difference in size. This one's a little got a bit of a higher rise compared to the baby behinds. This one might last a bit longer, all right? But the elastics are quite soft and stretchy too. You know what, just get a few different ones. So this one's a snap closing. And if you've got snap closing newborns, you do want to look for that you can cross it over, all righty? If you've got the option to size it at the front, you do want to make sure you can cross it over on the waist so you can get a little, little waist. So I'll show you that. So an all in two means the insert will come out, all right? Which means you can replace the insert. There you go. So I'll put this one on the premier setting. And we can all go, oh, hey, Kerry, two weeks should last longer, Kerry, than two weeks. If it doesn't, just remember to pull up through the groin. Now, I'll talk about fitting as well. That's a really good point, Kerry. Thank you. All right, that one I want. All right. And this one's also got the snap down for the umbilical cord as well. All right, so it's got snap down for the umbilical cord. It's got little, little legs. There's not much absorbency in there. I need a little person. I should have got the dolls. I'll do it next time. It's little legs. Now, once the umbilical cord drops off, and you've still got a little bub, you can cross over. Those snaps loud on the video? I'm hoping not for you. All right, and you can snap it over. I don't need another child. I have enough. All right, so that's an all in two. Okay, so what can I tell you? Now, you have, what else can I tell you? Fit, 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 fit on a newborn. This will be easier to use. My dolls, where are my dolls? Give me a second, let me think about where my dolls are, if I can get them quickly. I only had them the other day. I can't think where they are. Bugger. Alrighty, so you're gonna have to work with me. Sorry guys. Alrighty, so you fit, it's at the belly button. So when you put it on bum, this back, this is the back of the baby behinds, goes at the back, okay, in line with the belly button. So pop it on, and then when you bring it up, you'll just pull through the groin, and it will come up, and it should be in line with the belly button all the way around. If they've still got their umbilical cord, it'll be a little bit lower, okay, to allow for that umbilical cord. But it should be a good fit. You don't want n no gaps around the leg, you should be a firm fit. You should be able to get two fingers underneath without, like your own pants, so you're not being strangled, okay? Uh, Some people get a bit worried about the red marks on newborns. As long, a, a few red marks is okay. You know, when you had your um, pants on for a while, and I've got pants on, I've got red marks. Yeah, I've got little indentations and a few little red marks because it's been hot and humid today. That's okay. What you don't want to see is... um skin looking really red and raw like it's being rubbed you don't want skin coming off you don't want little bumps you don't want a rash starting okay newborns have sensitive skin so in those first few weeks when you're using your nappies whether they're um, disposables or whether they're um, cloth nappies 
just watch their skin. You're changing them so often, and I know you've got so much else to deal with in those first six weeks. I get it, absolutely get it. And if you're a first time mum, you got the breastfeeding and the crying and the husband and the in laws and the people, you know, it's just, and you're just, you got your own body as well, trying to work it all out. It's okay. So just, when you're with Bub on the change up, just check their skin. Just have a look and make sure all is okay. Try some different things. You have a support group here. Pop up your question. Pop us a photo. If you don't want to do that, send us an email. I know um, Trudy, one of her girls, was allergic to disposable nappies in the first few months. Um, and she was trying to work that out. So that's, that's hard. <laughs> and she had to switch to cloth nappies. So they, I think I think I'm done with newborn nappies. Talked about fit. I've talked about the different styles. Uh, if you run out, if you all of a sudden you've got none left, okay, booster. Make it a mess. Booster. You probably have a few of these if you buy any packs. You can use a booster. So this is a baby beehive's booster. It does shrink a little bit once you wash it. If you fold it in three. It will fit perfectly in a newborn cover. Look at that. There's a change. Uh, a washer works really well. Stay there. A washer or a flannel, depending on where you're from and your family, works really well. A tea towel works really well too. It's not the best thing, but if you run out, it's okay. It's fine. You can use these things. Now, I can hear my girl. If you've got any questions on newborns, please ask. Now, which, which should you buy? You need to buy the one that will work for you. That is what you need to buy. You need to think about your materials. Do you want natural materials? Do you, are you okay with a polyester against their skin? Do you want a combination of both? If you want as much um, options, if you want total control of what goes on your bub, then your pre-folds and your flats is what you want to grab, okay? Because you can alter the absorbency, add more tape, you've got more versatility in these than you do in these. These are awesome for convenience. You know, why would you do disposables? These are fabulous and they're well made, easy to use, chuck them on, off you go and easy to wash. Okay, that's what you think. And then your budget. Okay, then you start windling everything else. These cost 26, don't quote me on it, about 26. Covers 14 to 18 dollars. A pre folds about two to three dollars each. Your flats are about Fifteen dollars each. You know, you got lots of options, but you need twenty-four changes, not necessarily twenty-four nappies. All right, um, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Sarah asks, any suggestions for gentle nappy rash creams that are suitable for cloth? Are you supposed to avoid zinc base directly against the nappy? Okay, so we get uh, quite a bit of information about uh, cloth nappy creams. Now, there are some creams that are cloth nappy safe. And that means you can put a layer on bub, use a cloth nappy, and it will wash out. Ones that are full of oils are generally harder to get out, get out at nappies because it's an oil. All right, it gets in there and it stays on the lining. Generally, will wash out. Zinc-based creams, you can use zinc-based creams. Use a liner. Use a um, disposable liner. Use a microfleece liner. Just put a, a barrier between the nappy and the baby. Now, some people talk about, oh, I have no problems with um, zinc-based creams and creams. They all come out in my washing routine. Fabulous. I've had issues with some creams. I've had issues with, with not some creams. I've had issues with some nappies. I've had issues with not some nappies. I think it's better to be cautious than to assume what works for somebody else. So you can put a liner in. Pop a micro fleece liner on. If you're using a very thick cream, um, so for some nappy rashes, you put a whole heap on. You put heaps of cream on, really thick cream. 
get your if you um, don't like disposable chop up an old dressing gown chop up an old blanket and use those and chuck them out as you use them or see if you can get a couple of uses out of them it's okay um, so some of our micro fleece liners would be caked in cream because we had such a bad rash Abby has bad skin so we would cake the cream on and then we just chucked the liners because they were like a rag so some that the so to summarize Sarah your creams will save the cloth nappy safe that means it's just a thin preventative layer okay that's what it means if you're putting on heaps okay it could get stuck in the nappy all right even with a really good wash routine um, zinc based ones are usually a little bit thicker I'd still use a liner I hope that answers your question Sarah um, you can always let me know exactly what's what. Uh, hello, Kerry. Would Terry flats work okay folded in three in a newborn cover or would they be too bulky? They would be too bulky because, where is she? So, so um, your old um, cotton flats, Kerry, they're thicker, so they're more bulky. That's fine. I mean, geez, our parents used them and parents with parents before that so that's fine okay that there's nothing wrong with them you're just gonna fold them um, this is a bamboo so it's a bit trimmer I would do it in a one size cover because I'll see if I can get this to a newborn I think it might be about that I think the um, cotton flats would be too bulky So it would fit. It is a bit bulky though, so you want to make sure that leg. So let me show you what I mean. You want to make sure you got that wide enough groin. So that groin, that wide enough groin means it forms a bit of a bucket for everything to sit in there. So you could do it with the bamboo flats. That would be fine because they're trimmer. Uh, a actual cotton ter cotton ones I don't think so I think it would be too big you'd need a one size cover to be able to alter the sizing you probably have to go not the newborn but the next one up and then it might be too big on bulk like really huge I'd be better off doing the fold to get it trimmer through the groin does that answer your question Carrie let me know if it doesn't hello Sue Sue asks would you have to wash the fleece liner separately no no, if you're using it with the creams, no, you shouldn't have to um, wash them separately. You just put them in with your washing as normal. Yeah, unless it's actually caked in um, cream, you might need to do a little bit of a hand wash. I had to do that sometimes to get it out and get it another couple of uses or soak them for a little while. And Sue, so, could you tell us a bit more about wall covers too? <gasps> I might do a separate video soon because then I can show you because otherwise I've got to run over there and run back. All right. So what I'll do, so wool covers are a alternative to your pool covers right in front of me. Alrighty. The difference is they're absorbent and you'll analyze them. And um, we have some really great um, products from Sheepish Grins that makes the analyzing a whole lot easier. You, can, um, you do your first one and then you spray it on. Really good. All right. So wool cover, wool covers are great. In um, what country is it? The Norway, Finnish countries. If James is here, he'd, he'd help me. I'm not a geography person. Um, they use them during the day. They don't analyze them during the day and just put the nappy on and put the wool cover on. And then night time, they analyze them. How awesome is that? So they don't even analyze them during the day. And I've actually been doing that with Abigail with the um, alpaca soakers. I just put them on during the day. It's really good. I love sheepish too, Sue. I do too. Um, yeah. There is a video, I believe, Sue, of an, a previous AMA, Lanicare. Who's Lanicare? Sue, who's that? Is that a brand of nappy? Let me know. All right, so wool covers. I can always, I think I did that only a little while ago. 
I'll just go have a look. All right, I've got to make notes, don't I? I was linking to the folds. I'll write it down that I won't forget for you. Linking to folds for flats and free folds and the wool covers. Ah, thank you, Sue. So many brands. Oh, and oh, can't think of the nappy already. Okay, I think I'm done on newborn, unless you have any other questions. And I'll move on to the questions we have from people posting them earlier. All right, had one from Amy, darling Amy, who asked about a pinkish tinge to her inserts and what is the best wash routine. <laughs> All right, pinkish tinge to inserts. I need a photo, I'll be honest. I went and had a look and there quite a few different things came up. Um, we get a pinkish tinge on stuff here because we're on tank water and humidity. So I'd want to know where you're living, Amy, if you listen to this later. So I want to know where you're living and I'd want to know how often you're washing. I have a feeling it's just a little bit of a pink mold. And if it's not too bad, it's fine. You might just need to wash a little bit longer, uh, more often, I mean. Um, and we'll just, just shoot us an email with your wash routine and I'm sure we can help you troubleshoot. All right. Um, her other question was the best wash routine. Oh, it's a loaded question. Um, there's Facebook groups for this now. Best wash routine. The best wash routine is the simplest wash routine. And then if you have any issues, you troubleshoot those issues. That's it. All right, so the best wash routine is dry paling your nappies. All right, which means popping them into a, a basket. Um, Sue asked about nappy storage. There are a few options. This is one option. So you take it off bub. Take, get out rid of the poo, and getting rid of the poo, you can use a nappy sprayer or um, a spatula as well to scoop it off. Or um, I saw someone um, recommended this idea as well. So if you've got the poo, turn the nappy this way, inside out, and then flush the toilet and stick it in there. Now your hand might get wet, so make sure your hair, make sure the water you're using is a potable source. Alright? That's the only thing you've got to make sure. It's potable means it's drinking if it's drinking water. Alright? Um, and then rinse. And then you can wash your hands. It's okay. It's alright. Because that water hasn't been sitting anywhere. It's it's fresh, clean water. That's another way. So you can use a nappy sprayer. You can use a spatula. Um, just make sure you label the spa uh, spatula and you do clean it off after you've finished and put it into a bucket. And it is labelled poo spatula. <laughs> you don't want to use that for your eggs. Oh. Right. Or turn the nappy in and swish it around when you flush the toilet. Okay. So some toilets are um, not have, don't have a lot of pressure. Um, so you can test that out, which would work for you. Now, to store... If your nappy is saturated when you bring it, when you've done your job, it will have to go into a bucket of some kind that can hold liquid. Um, you, most wet bags won't hold a stopping wet nappy. They're designed to hold a nappy that has a wee in it, but not dripping wet from being washed. So you, so just note that you might need to dry paling. Pop the nappy in your basket. Any sort of bucket will do. Some people like the ones that are really holy. Uh, you can get just use any bucket. Leave the lid off for airflow. If you put the lid on, it's going to make all the bacteria do jive and multiply. And whew, when you take the lid off, you might pass out. All right, so that's storing. You can also store it in a wet bag or a hanging wet bag. So a few options, you can do that as well. And these are breathable, so there's still airflow going through. I put mine straight into the washing machine. That is another option. We change, we chuck it in. Now, the wash routine. So you got rid of the poo, you've stored them. The wash routine, okay, pre-rinse to remove any loose bits and to dilute the weed. 
just a quick rinse. So the, on most machines, there's a rinse cycle of some kind, whether that's um, front or top loader. And then on your main wash, then you can add, if you don't have a full load of nappies, add some baby clothes, add some towels. Um, some people don't add towels to their front loaders. I've never owned a front loader, so um, if anyone's got experience there, feel free to share. I always had a top loader. I just put all my clothes in and wash it all together. Um, that's fine. Uh, that's it, just wash it on. Don't do your eco wash. You want to make sure you have water. So you need, when you wash nappies, you need water and you need agitation and you need a good detergent. The amount of detergent you use is what it says on the bottle. If you find it doesn't quite do the job because either you have a bigger machine or it's an eco brand, add a bit more. Okay, now there's, um, there's clean cloth nappies down under. They've done lots of research on this stuff. All right, you can take what they say and then alter it to what you've got, okay? But start out with what it says on the bottle for your type of machine, whether it's a top loader or a front loader. Also check to see if it's a cold water, warm water, or if you need a hot wash, all right? So if you're using a detergent that needs a warm wash and you're doing it on cold water, it's not gonna break down and do its job. Don't overstuff your machine. So if you've got a top loader, don't push it down. <laughs> okay, just place it in and it will it will tell you where, where the level is. Don't push it down because if you push it down, you're not going to get the agitation to clean the nappies. <laughs> All right, um, yes, I've spent too much time from washing machines. Uh, water, so don't use your eco. Agitation, don't overstuff your machine. A lot of people like to overstuff it. Oh, just add that one more pair of jeans. Um, by doing that, you're taking away the ability for all the, the fibres to move. Instead, they're just doing this. All right. Um, if you don't have enough water, you're not dissolving the detergent and it's not rinsing out because all the clothes are not really being rinsed properly. What's the other order of water? Detergent. And a good detergent. What do you use? Now, if you've got a brand that says you must use my brand, if you want to keep my warranty, that's your choice. You need to use that brand to keep that warranty. Um, some brands have a recommended recommendation for a particular washing detergent. See if it's attached to their warranty or not. Generally, anything that does not have a fabric softener in it and doesn't have a bleaching agent. Generally, everything else. So enzymes, uh, depending on the enzymes, are fine. Most, okay. Um, you just want to... I don't do the science in this. I, I trust the detergents. Just your fabric softeners and your bleaches. Stay away from those because the bleach will start eating stuff and the fabric softener will make them water repellent. There you go. So I hope, where's my piece of paper? Amy, I hope that answers your question. Oh, and wash, washing every day. That will solve a lot of problems if you wash every day. Every two days at most, I have people who say, I wash every four days. Um, but it actually turns out they actually do a rinse cycle every day and then do on their fourth day, they wash all their nappies together. So that's them doing a bulk load of nappies. You can do that, but my only concern would be for humid conditions like what we're in is wet nappies for four days. There you go. So washing every one to two days is recommended so they can dry, they can be washed, dried, and they're not sitting in wee and poo for days on end, or wet. Alrighty, if you've got questions, pop them up. I'm happy to chat. I'm still washing nappies. Oh, still. Alrighty, uh, okay. Um, Miriam, our next question, wanted to know about using different nappies for different occasions, and if I have ever done that, I believe her question asked. Absolutely. So, different children will need different nappies. Uh, different caregivers will do, need different nappies and different seasons generally need different nappies. So if you're your caregivers, they usually like the Velcro and sized generally. If they're um, not well versed in cloth nappies, they like to be able to just put it on and off they go. They get the idea of the fit, but if they have to start sizing, they can get a little bit overwhelmed. 
uh, from when we had a carer with the boys, she always went to the Velcro ones and always went to the sized ones. The snap ones she found a bit irritating. Um, the carers we have for Abigail, they always go to the all-in-ones or the pockets um, and sized. They don't like the one size because it's just too much. And we have to usually teach people how to use them for an older child. Um, for differences between children, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, Abigail, she used, she was great in fitteds and covers. Uh, Daniel, we had no money with Daniel, so he had to use Abby's fitteds, but he would have been better with prefolds. Uh, Nathan, who used the same fitteds but outgrew them at 18 months, and they were the baby behinds fitteds. We went to size nappies and pockets because he had disgusting poos. Um, so we needed something that was sized and didn't have bits of material. It, it just all went on the one spot and didn't have flaps and stuff for the poo to get under. And uh, Alistair, he was a pretty fold boy. They worked awesome for him. Just fold it in three, shove it in a cover, off you went. They were fabulous for him. All the others use bits and pieces and that. But, yeah, so for different kids, different nappies. And season, uh, wool covers can be used any time of the year. They're cooling and warming. Okay, so they can be used any time of the year. Uh, usually flats and prefolds for winter are best because they're quick drying. In summer, who cares because you're not wearing pants. So you can get all these gorgeous little um, covers out um, but if you're in a humid part, make sure you can open the nappy up to be um, dried. So the old um, baby behinds, all in ones that had sewn in microfiber, much improved now. You can now hang this bit up separately and the air can go between the layers. Make sure the nappy can open up. You can pull the bits out, you can open it up and it can dry. Hope that answers your question, Miriam. Your other question was um, breastfeeding, poo and nappies. Usually you can just rinse it off. Um, some people say, uh, and you can, not rinse it at all. But I have found it depends on the baby's poo. Sometimes it will stain yellow. Um, and some people have found it doesn't come off because it, it dries. Um, generally, just rinse it off. It is I think it's actually quite, um, oh, what's the word? can't think of the word. Um, rinse it off. Usually under the tap is fine. And off you go. If you get yellow staining, pop it out in the sun. The sun will um, bleach it out and make it go white again. It might take a couple of goes, but that's okay. As long as it's clean, it's fine. As long as it's clean. Stains are fine. Nobody's going to see it. The only person going to see it is you. Okay? Unless you don't feed your kid. And then they never poo. Um, and bottle feeding. So she wanted to know specifically how the poos change from bottle feeding to breast from breastfeeding to bottle feeding or a combination. So I had to do this for all of my boys. Um, around uh, eight, nine months because I had to stop breastfeeding because of Abigail's needs. But that's what I needed to do. Anyway, so we had to do the changeover from breastfeeding to bottle feeding. Um, so uh, Daniel, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Uh, Daniel uh, did bottle feeding as well because I couldn't produce enough. That's right. Um, so the poos went from the squishy uh, yellow runny. They came a little bit more solid. And depending on the formula we used, changed the colour as well. So they just became a bit more solid. Not solid like like grown up poo. Um, they became more mashed potato. <laughs> so it went from a pumpkin soup <laughs> consistency to a mashed potato consistency. So I hope that answers your question. That's a bit gross really. <laughs> oh poo. I know too much about poo. Um, yeah. There we go. That's all the questions. That's we're done. We have um, been here an hour. How awesome is that? Um, I hope I've answered everyone's questions. I hope um, you've enjoyed that.
It will go up on YouTube in a few weeks. Um, it's in the group Evergreen. If you know anyone who needs to know about newborn nappies, pop a, let them know about the group. Um, we're here to help and assist. It's not just a place to gas back. And come join me in the US. It's not long. I'm still, um, we're getting very close to booking the accommodation for Las Vegas. Getting very, very close. It's a big decision. The, 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 the convention center is up here, and then there's the strip, Las Vegas strip. I'm trying. Abigail's laughing. Um, sorry. And um, where to stay? Do I stay on the strip? Do I stay off the strip? Do I stay at the convention center? Big decisions. James and I sat down today and looked at it all, so I think it's um, I think it's all right. Alrighty, guys. I'm off to have a cup of tea and to go check my girl. Thank you very much for um, your support and letting me start a little bit earlier so I can attend to her needs tonight. And I hope that's answered all your questions. If you have any more, pop them below. I will um, get to them tomorrow and I'll pop up those links tomorrow as well only because I'm now going to bed. We go to bed very early here. Um, I know most of the other people are up at 8, 9. <laughs> Alrighty. Happy newborn nappy. Ask me any questions. I really don't mind. Um, ask the group. That's what we're here to support each other. Okay, as we go on this journey. Alrighty. Oh, and next AMA is going to be large cloth nappy. So if you know anyone with special needs kids, um, and I don't mean special needs as in um, severe disabilities, um, like my girl, I'm talking um, children who have autism, children who uh, have Down syndrome, children who have a um, bowel condition, children who have a um, urinary condition, parents who are looking for options for toilet training, parents looking for options for overnight. If you know anybody, let them know, and that's what we're going to be doing next month and having a chat about all things special needs. Alrighty, guys. Have a beautiful Wednesday night and... Um, Weekend, it's not far away. Alrighty. If you're having a wine, have another one for me. Thanks, guys. Bye.